Hi, I'm Sam here with Batch Stoves. And today I'm going to do another dry baking video. Uh, this particular video, I'm going to try something different. Uh, this is a coffee filter. And Rich, uh, YouTube username Bushman of Yukon, we've been going back and forth and changing different, uh, trading different ideas. And he's been doing some videos with my uh, 12 centimeter dry baking combo and I told him about this coffee filter now this idea came from another YouTube user who also is using my 12 centimeter dry baking combo uh, medicine man 4040 uh, be sure to try uh, check out his video he makes a, a peach cobbler out in the middle of the woods uh, in up in Maine and I believe his video is titled foggy Rome so I got the idea from the watching that video on the coffee filter and Rich did a dry baking video using my 10 centimeter cook uh, dry baking dish using the coffee filter and it turned out pretty well and so I thought well I'm going to try the coffee filter out myself now I like the, the, the 10 centimeter dry baking dish is fairly non-stick and, and it, anything that you cook in it simply wipes out but like he says in his video if you're out on the trail why even worry about it it's a basically the same principle as a as a muffin a muffin liner so we're going to give it a try now what we have is some bisquicks uh complete buttermilk biscuit mix this is a just add water mix and basically I'm using about a quarter of that package it's actually one cup uh, I mean excuse me a half a cup of dry mix that's exactly what I'm using half a cup of dry mix of the Bisquick and then I'm, I added some cinnamon about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a half a tablespoon of sugar in and then some water and mixed it up now this is not a lot because it's it is it's going to rise you don't really need a whole lot so we're going to put that in the ten centimeter cook pot with the ten centimeter dry baking dishes sorry with the coffee filter now this coffee filter is a little large this is an 8 12 cup coffee filter and I think probably you need something a little smaller I'm not sure exactly what size they come in maybe uh, six to eight cup size or four to eight cup size maybe would be really nice and probably fit this really well I have I have to ask rich what size he's using because his seem to look like they fit a little bit better than this one does so if he sees this video maybe he'll comment and let us know about what size he's he's using so on top of the dry big bake mixture I'm just adding some applesauce and I'm gonna try to make some apple cobbler we'll just pour that package right on top Now, if you're out on the trail and you happen to bring this combination with you and you run across some wild berries, uh, you may want to skip the applesauce and put in the wild berries. I think that would be great. So I'm using my 12 centimeter cook pot along with my 10 centimeter dry baking dish and I have just a foil, one inch foil spacer in here. Uh, after several requests, people asked me to make some of these uh, aluminum rings, so I did make some and put them in the store. Uh, this is not one of them. This is just some aluminum uh, foil spacer that I made. So we'll stick that in there. And you can see that you have a good half inch or so of space with that one inch spacer in there. Works really well. Put the lid on that 
and I'm using my BR1 wick alcohol stove along with the adjustable remote feeder I brought this adjustable remote feeder and showed that in a video about a month ago apparently this the adjustable remote feeder has stirred up a lot of controversy and after it came out uh, people were just leaving me all kinds of positive feedback I was I'm very thankful for the comments uh, I found that it was just needed when I was using uh, wick alcohol stoves. I had never really used wick alcohol stoves that much. And after building building one of my own, I, I decided that, you know, this is crazy. You really need something to adjust the, and regulate the fuel flow. So I came up with this. The adjustable remote feeder was meant for a fine adjustment when you just can't quite get the fuel regulated the way you want to and get the the temperature you want now if you just want to run the stove full blast well you can always find something to put up under the remote but when you want to regulate it to where it's getting enough fuel to keep burning at a low temp for dry baking you really need something that you can adjust and that's what this is for it's for a fine adjustment so on, on to the dry baking uh, let's get the stove lit I'm going to be using heat now this is a one ounce fuel bottle and I put one ounce in there to begin with and it's about a halfway now so the rest of it's in the stove in the wick let's get that on there and let's put a windscreen around it I anticipate this taking 25 to 30 minutes what I found with dry baking is low low heat and slow cooking really does really well for dry baking that's just my opinion um, other people that do dry baking have different methods and they've all figured out what works well with whatever equipment they're using and you'll have to do the same no matter what equipment you're using if once you start dry baking you'll 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 get it dialed in and you'll have it just the way that you want it and find out exactly what works for you your stove the fuel you're using uh, etc uh, it's fun to try it out at home get it perfected so that when you get out on the trail you you got an idea of what it's going to look like when it's ready, how long it's going to take, and if the recipe you're trying to do is even feasible. So, let's try to make some apple cobbler with some Bisquick, buttermilk biscuit mix, and a applesauce cup. So let me start this ooh, a little late on starting the timer, but... Luckily, we're dry baking, and we know it's going to take a long time, so time is not really an issue. So we'll check back on it uh, about the 10-minute mark or so and see where we're at. Okay, so we're at the 10-minute mark. Let's check on it, see what it's looking like. Ooh. Okay, you can kind of see it's risen substantially it's still real wet on the top now at this point in time at the 10 minute mark I'm going to add my little surprise and this is some basically it's some uh, graham crackers that have been scrunched up and some brown sugar for a nice little cookie crumble we're going to put that probably not all of this but we're going to put that on top maybe half of that put that on top and that'll make a nice apple cookie crumble topping on top of our cobbler so we're going to let this run uh, for another 10-15 minutes or so and we'll see how it goes um 
uh, one thing that's nice about these windscreens is they don't get hot. So the carbon felt's really good about that. It doesn't take any heat away from your stove and your baking and boiling water or whatever you're doing because the carbon felt doesn't get hot. It's basically a, a, it's a really good insulator and so it keeps the heat in and it doesn't take any of the heat output out of your stove so it's really good. Another thing is it's nice around camp to hold hot items, uh, hold your pots when they're hot. Also if you're hydrating food you can wrap the pot in the carbon felt and that'll help uh, insulate it and continue cooking your hydrated food. So it's really it's really good. I'm really happy with these uh, carbon felt windscreens. So let's uh, let's check. Uh, you want to check? Oh, another thing too is when you're dry baking, you want to use the windscreen to help regulate. Also help regulate the uh, temperature depending on what kind of stove you're using. And let me show you what the flame pattern looks like. You can see it's just a real small flame that I'm using to dry bake. Uh, you don't really need a whole lot. So let's uh, oh. let's check back in and on uh, around the 25 minute mark. It should be good to go. So we'll check back. Okay, so we're at the 25 minute range. Let me check it and see where we're at. Uh, you can see it's looking really tasty and it smells delicious. Uh, let me check the center. Uh, Still kind of wet. I'm afraid it'll be a little doughy in the center, but just because of all that liquid that we put in there. So I'm going to let it go. Another five minutes just to be on the safe side, and then another four minutes, excuse me, and then we'll take it out. All right, so we'll check back and at the 30 minute mark okay so we're at the 30 minute mark and let's take this out take this off the stove here get that one out Hot, hot, hot. Very good. Looks really, really, looks really delicious. Um, because we had all that moisture in the center, I was a little concerned that the center is going to be doughy. But we let it go 30 minutes. And uh, hopefully that was long enough. It looks baked on the sides, so we'll see. Okay. So hot, hot, hot. Okay. Wonder if I can just lift this out of the without too much trouble. It's really still kind of gooey. 
Uh, that's the thing about these cobblers. They're not like biscuits or muffins. So, we can get it out. Whew. Now you can see our, our cobbler. Now, the thing about using this coffee filter is it doesn't brown on the sides. Or, let me see. If it does brown, yeah, you can't really see it. Now, it cooks. It definitely cooks uh, with it. But it sticks to it. I don't know how well it would do. It looks like it's cooked all the way through. It's just got all this applesauce in there. But it looks like it cooks all the way through. But it doesn't seem to get brown like it does when it's on, up against the metal. So, um, you know, give it, give it, give it a shot. And see what you think. This looks really, really hot. It looks really good, though. Now that's good. Um, that's really, really good. It's not really polite to uh, eat in front of people, so without offering you some so if you would like to have some apple cobbler with a, a graham cracker crumble on top stop by the website pick up your 12 centimeter dry baking combo and get the ingredients I'll list them on the details for this video and I'll leave the recipe there and you can make it and try it yourself. So I'm Sam at Batch Stoves. Thanks for watching the videos. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stop by the website at www.batchstoves.com and have a great day.